The Royal Air Forces Association's Air Mail talks to the engineers and personnel with first-hand experience of working on and in the Chinook over the last 40 years. They do vibrate a lot. Remembers technician Chris Cottrell, who served with the RAF from 1977 to 1986 on the Chinook build team. Behind the instrument panel and under the pilot's seat, there's a mass balance device, which actually physically swings the other way to the aircraft's vibrations. Otherwise, it's basically, you know, you can't see the instruments and the pilots will vibrate so much they can't fly it properly. But I think I would describe it, as, the only way to describe it is it's a bit like travelling by concrete mixer. The Chinook is an incredibly advanced aircraft, with modern developments in technology adding to its effectiveness. It's extraordinarily capable, says Martin Sharp, a former flight commander with 18B Squadron, Chinook desk officer with the MOD, a Gulf War veteran, and former officer commanding 7 Squadron. The power gives it this ability to manoeuvre, which people see at air shows. Because it's big, it's assumed to be lumbering. You see a sports car, small, tiny, highly manoeuvrable, you assume. Big truck, can't move. It's different in helicopters. The power that makes helicopters manoeuvrable, and the Chinook has a power-to-weight ratio that's almost unrivaled. Another feature of the Chinook is its robustness. I did two tours in the Falklands. I did, was in the war, and I went down in 1984 on my second tour recalls Chris Cottrell. And one of them had a um, blade strike from its underslung load. So they were carrying a container. It was about 110 feet long, I think it was, this thing hanging down. The aircraft was going along, and then all of a sudden the end of it snapped off, and it went over the top of the aircraft, through all the blades, round the tunnel, and round the front head. And the crew landed it on Victory Green in Stanley. The Chinook's ability to carry on regardless has its genesis in the design stage. The fuel tanks had fire suppressant, so if a bullet were to hit the fuel tank, it has self-sealing tanks, says Martin Sharp. If you crash land, the tanks break off, break away, and self-seal, so as not to burn the whole aircraft. Most of the control systems are duplicated. There's only a few very isolated points where the, the hydraulic systems come very close together. So you could have bullets go through all sorts of areas. The blades can take great chunks out of them and they still continue to function. It could fly successfully on one engine at most weights. So when you get very heavy, then you need both engines. If you were to lose fuel system on one side, the other side can cross feed to feed both engines. The engines will run with virtually no oil. However, perhaps the most recognisable feature of the Chinook is the sound. So what exactly does cause a distinctive and much-loved Waka Waka? It comes from the compression of the air between the two overlapping rotor discs, says Sam Hodgkinson, of 28 Squadron's Chinook flight. But the really weird thing is that you don't hear it when you're in the aircraft. Not at all. It's masked by the internal noise, 